What up, what up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Let's Ask Paul, the podcast where I, Paul Abernathy, CEO and president of Electrical Code Academy Incorporated, answers all your pressing electrical questions that you may have on the National Electrical Code. Of course, you can submit those questions to me free of charge over at our submission portal. That is paulabernathy.com, P-A-U-L-A-B-E-R-N-A-T-H-Y.com. That is our portal. And all of this is sponsored by Electrical Code Academy. Electrical Code Academy. Easy for me to say. Um, And so if you want more information on the courses that we have, whether it's grounding and bonding, whether it's uh, residential electrical codes, uh, commercial electrical codes, industrial electrical codes, we'll get into all that. Uh, Again, grounding and bonding, or even if you want basic electrical theory. All of that, we have courses for that. Now, if you're trying to learn the National Electrical Code at a, you know, at a 10,000 foot level and you want to have a more well-rounded understanding of the NEC, then you want to get our Fast Tracks Black program. But if you need some videos or you want some of our video content, then I recommend the Fast Tracks Plus program, which is the same as the Black. It just gives you access to videos that are on our website that you don't normally get in the Black program. Okay, so anyway, there's your options, and Electrical Code Academy, again, sponsors uh, this Let's Ask Paul podcast, so uh, we appreciate all your patronage, and I should tell you right now, until November 30th, we have a 25% off, okay, 25% off special running on our Fast Tracks Plus programs, whether it's the 2017 or the 2020, so if you want the videos, but you also want the course and you want to get into a structured program, it's not just for learning for the exam. It's it's to help you become better in the code. So if you want that, we have a special huge 25% off. It's like $130 some dollars off and you get access to it for an entire year, 24-7, 365. You get to come to our Wednesday night sessions if you want. Uh, so, so much there. Check that out. Just go to our website and at checkout, use... Black Friday 2022, all caps, Black Friday 2022, all capital letters, okay? And that only applies to the Fast Tracks Plus. Uh, Originally, it was to everything, uh, but we just started selling out so quickly, even before Black Friday, on our bundles, which was the greatest deal, because I think it's like close to $280 off or something like that. It was, it was huge, but they went so quickly and we just can't generate the keys. So we've had to amend that. And that's why it said limited time only. So now it, you know, it's, it's very specific to the Fast Tracks uh, Plus program. So check that out. All right. On today's episode, uh, we had an email came in uh, overnight that said, Paul, can you discuss all of the elements that are necessary to be successful in passing an electrical exam. Now, um, when I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking broadly, right? So it's not state specific. It's not jurisdictionally specific. It's not like you're in Illinois and you've got the localities giving you tests. I mean, at the end of the day, the testing should be based on the National Electrical Code. Now, there are areas which they're going to actually get into some basic electrical math, and we'll talk about that. But for the most part, it usually comes straight from the code. Uh, Now, there will be situations where you're going to have, you know, calculation aspects that you need to be aware of. And we'll discuss that in today's episode. I'll kind of give you the broad picture of what you need to be ready for. So it's going to be a great episode. So hopefully all you folks uh, will tune into it and listen to this whole program, not just five minutes of it. But again, chill out, sit by the fire. Thanksgiving is over. Uh, Black Friday's here. Um, it's time to get our knowledge on. Okay. So hopefully you'll listen to this whole thing. And again, share it with others because you can listen to any of our podcasts on any of your favorite podcast listening platforms. Now I recommend you listen from our app and you can download our app at www.neccat.com. NEC chat. It's a national electrical collective. And you can listen to, download the app, and you can, you know, some of the videos are available. Some of our online quizzes are available on the app. Uh, You can interact with us on the app. You can get to the Sparky Hub on the app. You can listen to podcasts on the app. So it's just neat. It sits right on your phone, doesn't take up any space, and uh, allows you to be interactive and allows you to communicate with our office here. That's what it really is. It's a communication app. All right. 
So anyway, let's go on and get into today's topic. So I want to answer the question first about, uh, yes, there is certain elements to preparing for an electrical exam. And of course, our Fast Tracks programs do that. It's basically we created a structured approach to learning the NEC. But for anybody out there who's uh, preparing for an electrical exam and you might not be using our Fast Tracks program and you're using some other program or some other course or some other book, I want to make sure that we explain all the elements that you need to be working on. Because if you're getting a book or something, and, and no disrespect to books out there, but if you're getting one that's just giving you code questions, that's not really the right answer. That's that's not the proper way to study. Now, you might fumble your way through and get your license and everything like that, but then once you're out in the field, you'll be calling everybody asking for advice because you didn't really learn anything. You just kind of made it enough to get your license. And look, if that's all you need to do, that's fine if that's what you feel like you need to do. But I could tell you what, if I had a dollar for every electrician that calls me and says, you know, I, I got my license, but uh, I need help with this, I need help with that, I just don't feel like I know the code like I should, because this is your profession. This is what you're supposed to know, okay? A doctor's supposed to know how to do this and that. I don't want them pulling out a textbook while they're doing freaking open heart surgery on me. I mean, this is why they learn. This is why they continue to learn. So it's the same thing, and I've always wanted to elevate the electrical profession as that. It's a constantly, perpetually learning uh, profession, and treat it with pride, noble, okay? I love wearing shirts that say master electrician and hats, and I'm proud of it, okay? Regardless of going to engineering school, doing everything, that don't mean nothing to me. That was just a money pit. To me, being an electrician means everything to me, whether I'm teaching it now or when I did it with my hands, it, it, it just is for me. And if you've got your license, you should be damn proud of it, right? Because it is a noble profession, okay? I like to say we're the keepers of the light. We make sure things run and people don't get hurt because, you know what? Our stuff can kill you, right? Okay, enough of that. All right, let's talk about the different areas that you need to be prepared for when you're doing an electrical exam. First and foremost, uh, one of the things I think that you should be very uh, fluent in is electrical math, the basic maths. So you need to understand decimals. You need to understand working with fractions. You need to understand, you know, numerators, denominators. You need to understand percentages, how to work percentages, how to create a percentage can be converted. Uh, all of those things, you need to be very uh, fluent in that. Now, with us, the Fast Track students, we don't get into that in the Fast Tracks program specifically, but I do what's called a supplemental video that is available in our program uh, that they can watch. That and, and sometimes on Wednesday nights, we'll have done uh, sessions that um, we will discuss basic electrical math. So that's available to all the students that, that join and get over into the Sparky Hub. It's usually on a rebroadcast that's available that you can go watch. And, and we'll dig into basic math. Now, granted, on most exams, you're going to have a calculator anyway. So a lot of this stuff, you're like, why do I need to know how to do it? Um, I just think that as part of our profession, you need to understand the basics of it, the concepts of it, right? And so it's important to me that you understand how to take a fraction and get it down into decimals and be able to work with it, uh, especially now on an exam, because you might have something that, that says, you know, half, and you got to know you divide the one into two, and we're going to be getting 0.5. We need to know those things so that we can make sure that it makes it for a smooth transition in our calculation, because okay, it's very hard on a calculator to do fractions, so you need to break it down in decimals. So even that basic element is seems simple, but I want to make sure that during a stressful situation on an exam that you, you don't have any problem being able to do that conversion. So the comfort level with basic math is important. And again, we have a video that we share. It's not available on uh, YouTube. It's, it's part of our exclusive program. So again, uh, don't go hunting for it. But there are plenty of them out there that will teach you basic math. So go check it out. Uh, the next thing you need to know is I think you need to have a, gr a firm grip of Ohm's law. Um, whether or not you're, you know, looking at Ohm's law wheels, uh, whether or not you're looking at the different formulas that you'll deal with. Um, you also need to understand under Ohm's law, we're going to we're going to lump all of that into electrical theory. And so you need to understand series circuits and parallel circuits, and you need to know when it's a series parallel circuit and how to break it down from a parallel series circuit into one, a complex circuit down into a simple circuit so that it's 
getting it down to its simplest form in a series. And you, you, the fundamentals of how you do that. Now, again, um, that is something that we do on a Wednesday night session. So if it, people ask, so the Fast Tracks teaches you what you need to know about the code. What about the other things? Well, that's why I came up with the Wednesday nights, right? That, that's why I do that. Uh, because I know that there are certain things that we'll discuss that you could have on an exam. And, and when we do it, it's recorded and I make it available and it's always there for students to go into the Sparky Hub. And that's where we share everything in the Sparky Hub that you can go in and you can watch that rebroadcast and, and uh, it's exclusively for Fast Track students. OK, so it's available and that's how we share a lot of that stuff. So if you're a Fast Track student and you haven't joined the Sparky Hub yet and we have thousands of students, but they're not all in the Sparky Hub. Make sure you go to the website, uh, thesparkyhub.com, thesparkyhub.com, and make sure that you join and you request to join the Fast Tracks Black and Plus program. Now, we're going to verify you are, so make sure you answer the four questions because, again, if you say you are and you're not, we're going to ban you from the site. So we're not into that dishonesty crap. So if you want to join it, go and join it, but it's a great community and we really do share and, and the members are awesome. Uh, and again, it's a select group. You don't let anybody in there. You have to be a fast track student to get in there. Okay. All right. So anyway, one of the next things, if you're studying and you, you've got a good concept on math, uh, it, again, is the Ohm's law, understand Ohm's law. We'll tie into that, you know, voltage drop, understanding the formulas for voltage drop. Again, I have a separate video just on voltage drop for the students. Um, and we talk about that on certain Wednesday nights. So there, there's always little supplements that I give to the students uh, Wednesday nights. And of course, if they want to come to Wednesday night and make a, and ask a question, then we'll break that down too, right? All right. Uh, so the next thing that we want to make sure that you understand in your study, when you're sitting down and you're really focusing on your study is understand neutrals, understand the calculations with neutrals, understand the neutral in its relationship to the grounded conductor. Because again, um, they're not the same. All, all neutrals are grounded conductors, but not all grounded conductors are actually neutrals. So you kind of get into that and we explain that, especially when you're dealing with things like a multi-wire brand circuit where the neutral is actually sharing the, the imbalance between the two phases and, and things like that. And we, we have those discussions on that, but again, covered in the program. Uh, but when you're doing low calculations in our program, we make it real prevalent that you understand the neutral calculations and how they're to be done, especially when you're doing services and things like that. Uh, and you're using part three of Article 220. We explain that the neutral and the additional reductions that you can have in 220.61b, we explain all that in the program. Uh, but of course, if they have questions, they just bring them to Wednesday nights and we'll knock them out. But uh, I think you need to understand healthily, if that's even a word, healthily? Is that a word? Anyway, I think you have to have a healthy understanding of what neutrals are and what grounded conductors are because they're not the same thing. Okay. Now, again, like I said, there's some cases where a grounded conductor is also a neutral, uh, but you know, you have to really understand w what the makeup is of both of those. And, and we go over that in, uh, again, ask me any type of question you want. All right, so the next thing I think it's important for exams is, okay, we, we've learned our basic calcs, we've learned our Ohm's Law, we, we understand series parallels, we're going to knock out those theory questions, and there's only a few on an exam. Uh, neutral conductors, importance, because we need to know when we're having a question about number of current carrying conductors, when a neutral constitutes a current carrying conductor or not. So we need to understand all of that, and we cover that. So, and you need to understand that, make sure you wrap your head around it so you're very comfortable with it. The next thing is cooking equipment and clothes dryers. So 220.54 and 220.55, um, it's really important that you understand how to do calculations with cooking equipment, whether it's a simple cooktop in two ovens, or whether it's one cooktop in one oven, whether it's being supplied by a single branch circuit, which the code allows. Um, but you need to understand oven calculation, range calculations, what happens, we have multiple ranges of different sizes, uh, you need to understand if you're working in table 220.55 that you need to understand that that under a standard method, you're going to have a certain value. And then under a 
optional method, you're going to have a certain value. So you have to understand how they apply, whether you're doing the optional or standard method. Same with a dryer. You have some baselines you have to have when you're doing a standard method, 5,000 or which uh, or the nameplate, whichever is greater as a standard. And an optional, you just take the nameplate. You need to understand the relationship between that. So make sure you spend a good amount of time going over uh, all different types of scenarios, like when you have ranges. And that's the low-hanging fruit for an exam, right? Ranges. So if I have ranges and they have the same ratings, then I need to understand what happens when all of a sudden one of those ratings are over 12KW and how I apply the notes under 220.55. So get very comfortable with the notes and how they apply, okay? Uh, and then what happens if I have ranges that have different ratings and they're going to fall under multiple columns? You have a column A, column B, and a column C, okay? Column A and B, okay, are percentages. Column C is an actual demand. That's a KW demand. So understanding the difference in how you apply those, it's probably something that you should really focus on. And of course, our course gets deep into that. Uh, but students are, uh, we also have some recorded sessions as well that are available to the students. Um, and again, I don't know anywhere else where you get this kind of stuff because it's beyond code prep, right? This is, this is stuff that you can go back to because once you become a fast track student, you get access to the Wednesday nights forever. It doesn't cut off after a year for the for for our Wednesday nights. Also, you get access to the Sparky Hub forever. That doesn't cut off either. So you can always come back and ask questions. Okay. So anyway, uh, there you go. So understand those. Um, also, one other important thing that you really should understand when you're doing all this is understanding branch circuits and the demands that are associated with that uh, when it comes to um, cooking equipment. And we have some great videos that are available for that. Now, our Fast Tracks Plus program also gives you access to videos via our app and on our website, exclusive training area. And we have some new videos that talk about ranges and things like that, which are awesome, uh, that type of thing. So that's another benefit to the Fast Tracks Plus is you do get access to those videos. Uh, you do not for the Fast Tracks Black because it is explained in the program in good detail. But some people are want that little visual as well. So that's what the plus is all about. Um, the other thing I want to make sure that you're you need to be really rounded on is commercial kitchen equipment. Understanding how to apply the 220.56 for commercial kitchen equipment um, and understanding how to apply those percentages. And, and, and again, knowing at the end of the day for the feeder or service that it can't be less than the two largest pieces of equipment. Uh, that's a little sentence in there that I think people overlook. And I can tell you our students overlook it when I'm looking at the uh, the, the reviews, the competency reviews, because uh, that is one of the questions and people tend to overlook that. So uh, make sure you understand kitchen equipment and all of the things that's associated with that. Uh, again, close dryer calculations, understand the difference between the standard and optional method. Make sure you're very clear on that. An easy way to think of that is optional method is simply going to take the nameplate. But remember, when you have three or more, okay, then you're able to use additional optional methods under 220.84 versus 220.82, which would be for a single dwelling type of thing or a dwelling unit, specific dwelling unit. So understand when that bridge takes place and all that type of thing. So again, moral of that story is just be very fluent with those types of um, calculations. Again, we have videos for that if you're interested, but be fluent in that. Uh, the next thing we would kind of talk about is do make sure that you understand voltage drop uh, again, even though on exams, it's kind of like you, you know, tongue in cheek, you're like, why are you even doing voltage drop? It only really applies for fire pumps and, uh, and sensitive electronic equipment in the National Electrical Code. And it's an informational note anywhere else. Um, and we know they're not enforceable, but for some reason, it is, you know, low hanging fruit on an electrical exam. And so it's going to be there. So make sure you understand voltage drop. Uh, you'll learn about, you have to understand the resistance of a conductor. You'll understand how it applies to Ohm's law when it comes to voltage drop. You'll look at the various formulas in, in our program. Uh, we'll even talk about how to find the exact K value, which is the constant. Although we do have the aspects in the code where uh, for exams, they're usually going to give you those values, but we show you how to calculate that out. 
And we have actually a really detailed video on that as well. Um, so again, make sure you're familiar with these formulas. You know, 2 times K times L times I divided by either the voltage drop, the actual voltage drop, to find the circular mill, or 2 times K times L times I divided by uh, the actual voltage is itself that's dropped 3%, for example, that's the value you put, and that will help you find the, the circular mill conductor size, or vice versa. You could put the circular mill down there and divide the top by that, and that'll tell you what the percentage is of the, vo the, the voltage that are actually dropped, the, the actual dropped voltage. So work those out. Learn how to do those, because as long as you have the formulas, and never forget that if it's three phase, it's 1.732 rather than using two. So if it's three phase and you're doing voltage drop, it's 1.732 times K times L times I divided by either the circular mill or the actual volts that are being dropped in order to determine whether you find the conductor size or to find the actual voltage that's been dropped in the circuit, right? So anyway, we cover all that. Again, if I, I went over that quickly, but that's this is not a lesson to teach you. We're talking about things that you need to be prepared for when you go take an exam. Okay, so for anybody out there, the, my one guy out there that thumbs down and he knows I know who he is, uh, this isn't a teaching lesson, so get over it. All right, so the next thing you want to make sure that you're proficient on, okay, and you're checking all the little boxes here, is understand conductor ampacities and what the factors that are involved with conductors. So I need you to make sure that you really understand continuous loads uh, we need you to, to understand when you have an ambient correction or you have more than three current current conductors, you're going to make an, an adjustment, both of which we used to call derating. And, and it is derating, but we now call it an adjustment or a correction. So make sure you're fluent on that, understanding that 125%, the reciprocal of that is 80%. So depending on whether or not you know the amps and you're trying to find the conductor size, or you already have a conductor size or a breaker size, and you need to find out what the maximum can be put on it to not exceed the 80%, understand that 125 and 80 are reciprocal. And how to use them really depends on what's given to you in the question. So we kind of go over that. And also, those that are in the Fast Tracks Plus program, which I should mention is on sale right now for 25% off. If you use Black Friday 2022, it's only available till November 30th. If you do that, then you get access to it. It's like $130 off of that. And you get access to all the videos. So check that out. It's the better deal. Okay, much better than going with the Fast Tracks Black right now because there is no special on that. So anyway, pretty good deal I, if you say so myself. All right, so understand that. Understand how to apply the um, 310.12, which is the application where you have the 83% rule that's going to apply to 100 through 400 amp, one family or two family dwellings or individual dwelling units. Understand how to apply that and know that that's not an exception. That's a rule in the code. So you're, it's a permissive rule that allows you to make sure the conductors don't have to be larger or they have to be at least 83%. They could be larger, but they have to be at least 83% of the rating of the service or the feeder. Even after if adjustment and corrections have to take place, the conductors still have to be at least 83% of whatever the service of feeder is. So it's important to know how to do those adjustment and corrections. Ultimately, how you apply 310.12, because on an exam, um, it's not whether or not you can apply 310.12. If all the things line up, then you most certainly want to apply the, the allowances of 310.12. Okay. Now, if you're in the 2017 code, that's 31015B7 but it's the same concept. And we cover it whether you're in the 2017 or the 2020 Fast Tracks, either one, we cover it. So, and, and for those that are in the PLUS program, we have what's called Derating Demystified video. It's a probably one of our uh, most popular videos that really breaks down conductors and ampacities and how to use 31016 in the 60 degrees, 75 and 90 degree columns and 110.14C for the terminals and temperature limitations. and it really goes into detail, so it's worth its weight in gold by itself, but if you're in the PLUS program, you get access to that. Um, next, um, you should know how to do raceway fill. Yeah, and maybe one question or two on an exam, maybe not. People say, well, that's not on the exam. Well, it should be, because um, 
every electrician needs to understand whether it's on an exam or not. Every electrician needs to understand how to do a raceway fill. Okay. To me, I'm going to tell you right now, you ready? You're not an electrician unless you know how to do raceway fill. I don't care if you work with cable all your life and you don't ever pull conductors inside of a raceway. You could be pulling a cable in a raceway. You need to know how to do raceway fill. You need to know how to determine a conductor's area. You need to understand what the informative annex C allows you to do because it is an informative annex. It's not enforceable, but it is a quick shortcut uh, if all the conductors are the same size. You need to understand the fill requirements, whether it's um, a single conductor, 53%, or two conductors, or if it's more than over two. Uh, and you need to understand all of these little nuances that are in Chapter 9, Table 1. And then, of course, you have all these little notes that you have to be aware of. So in your study process, when you get to that point, then you need to be thinking about um, those different notes and how these notes may apply. So if I don't need to do a fill requirement, if I'm just using a piece of raceway for physical damage protection, it's not complete at both ends, then note two says that I don't have to do raceway fill for that. So there's so many things that can get you off in the wrong area of study unless you understand the notes. And of course, our students in the fast tracks know that if there's something they don't understand, uh, then they can just come to Wednesday night and say, Paul, can you explain this more? I, I, I need somebody to explain it. That's the beauty of our program. You've got me here to try to answer these questions for you. I don't want you studying. So that's the difference. If you just grab a code book and you study, who are you going to ask these questions to? And can you trust the answer? So that to me is worth its weight in gold right there. All right. So anyway, we go over that. Make sure you understand the different size of conductors and how they play a role in the different raceways and, and how you would do raceway fill. So we go over that. Plus, we have extensive extra videos from Wednesday nights that we record that you can watch as well, where the class goes over these different scenarios. And, this, and, and the guys and gals that are in there are all great because they all bring up scenarios, right? They go, well, what if this or what if that? And, you know, it's basically when you watch the videos, you're like taking a sneak peek into people's mentality of how they're preparing for an exam. And that's gold because it helps you become not better for an exam, but a better electrician all around. And so, again, if you're not preparing for an exam, that's OK. Because it's designed to help ground you as an electrical professional. And that's what the program is really designed to do. Okay, so next thing you have to be fluent in is box fill. So make sure you understand box fill and junction boxes. Make sure you understand pull boxes. We just went over that the other night. So 314.16, understand how, to, how uh, pull boxes work. Uh, in 314.28, uh, box fill in 314.16, understand uh, the differences between table A and then B for the cubic inch. And it, it's important that you understand these. You might only get one or two questions on the exam, but I, if I had a dollar for every time a student called me before they got into our program and said, Paul, I, I just need a little help. I just need a little help. I'm only missed by one or two questions. Now, I think you missed it by a whole bunch more. But you're hinging on the fact that you missed it by one or two because you're willing to accept the minimum. And I get it. It's for your license. But when you go through our program, I'm expecting you to pull scores in the upper 80s and 90s because you're just that good. That's what our program is designed to do. That's why when people pass our program, they're getting upper 80s and upper 90s because they are good. They learn this stuff and I know they retain it in the field because they constantly call me and tell me that. So that's the difference between grabbing a code book and trying to study and having a structured plan. If you put a price on your time, I can promise you a structured program is going to be much better because it focuses on your time management skills. All right. So the next thing is we talk about motors. Uh, we have a video for motors where I go deeper into motors. We have a Wednesday night session where I go deep into motors. So we'll learn about overloads, short circuit ground fault protection, uh, branch circuit conductor sizes, feeder conductor sizes. Um, we go into all of that that is available to every student, although it is talked about in the Fast Tracks program. It's kind of very light because there are very little questions on an exam when it comes to motors. So I wanted to make sure that we at least had some conversations during a, like a Wednesday night session. So that's available to all students as well. So you do have that available. 
Uh, well, we'll go over single phase motor calculations, three phase, things like that. Uh, so we do go over that. Um, we talk about the FLC versus the FLA, which is kind of like the nameplate, the difference in nameplates for overloads or for like peri uh, periodic duty, intermittent duty and all that. That would use a nameplate. Um, but typically anywhere else for short circuit and ground fault protection, uh, for conductor sizing, all that's going to use the FLC. So make sure you, you have a good grasp of conductor sizing and motor sizing and, and things like that. Our program does that, but we, again, we, I supplement that with some extra stuff. Um, the next thing you need to be aware of if you're preparing for an exam is understand all the elements of a one family dwelling calculation, right? Understand the optional method, understand the standard method, understand all of the little steps that are evolved in the, in the way. Okay. Make sure you understand the, the three VA per square foot. Make sure you understand, um, all those little pieces, right? How to apply appliances. If you have four or more and the allowances that you get, um, Understand ranges, uh, obviously, as it is part of the, the study. Now, in our program, we have three units that really focus on calculations, okay? Uh, that is Unit 8, Unit 11, and Unit 13, which historically are the lowest scoring units for students. Some students have to take that two and three and four times, and that's okay. It's okay because that tells you this is where you're weak, so in the, in the real world, people today probably don't even do a full load calculation anymore. Either the engineer does it, and you hope they're right, but in a dwelling, you've just done so many. You look at it and go, ah, that's a 400, or ah, that's a 200. But do you really know how to calculate it? Do you want to stimulate your mind? Do you really want to know? And so we have units in our program, our program, that teach you all these elements. Now, if you're studying on your own, you need to really focus because Article 220 is broken down into different parts, and it, it can be difficult for folks, okay? Part one being general, part two being branch, part three being the standard method, part four being the optional method, part five being farms and whatnot. You need to understand all the little pieces, and it's not that easy. It jumps around, okay? Uh, and so when you see people talk about things like take the largest motor, uh, at 125% in, the, in the, the, just the sum of the other motors. And how does that apply to dwellings? Well, you have to think that 220.50 is exactly what it's saying, but people get lost in that and they start drifting all through the code. So we try to train people to understand the different steps. In fact, in our programs, we have a step-by-step -step form. And when you're doing a calc, you use the form. The form walks you through the steps. And that's done for a reason. Not because you're going to get to use this form on an exam, because you're not. What this does is it takes you through each step so that if you're on an exam and you get asked any part of the steps, you'll be able to do it based on the information that's provided. Now, why is that important? Well, I can confirm and tell you that there are quite a few states, even Texas now, who will give you a general question and then they'll ask you 10 things about that question. And you can answer every one of these questions by reading the main question. So basically, you're going to do a full calc, but you're going to answer each one of these questions. And if you don't know how to do each one of the steps, you're going to be totally lost. And so for me, I say kudos to Texas and other states who are coming up with that format. And that is exactly how we do it in our program. Our program will give you in unit 8, 11, and 13, we'll give you an example at the bottom and we'll base 10 questions or so on the, the question that's given. And we'll ask you questions on that scenario. And that is so that you can learn to pull out the important pieces and be able to pass your exam that way. Plus, if you, you know, what's that old saying? You've, you've heard me say it. If you teach a man to fish, he eats for a day. No, I'd see. I knew I'd do a George Bush moment there. If you feed a man a fish... <laughs> he'll eat for a day if you teach him how to fish he'll eat for a lifetime did I know I'd have a George Bush moment yeah I knew I would but you get the concept I want to be able to spoon feed you the different steps so that if you're asked that question then you can roll with it and you're not going to be shocked by it 
right? So that's what we do. And we do that in our units. Uh, and we, we kind of start that in unit eight and then 11 hits you again and then 13. So unit eight is your one family, two family dwelling. Uh, unit 11 is your multifamily. And then unit 13 is your commercial. Now, I tell students all the time in our program, take those examples and add variables to it on your own and rework it again. Be creative once you work the ones that are in the program um, and, you know, be creative with it so that, you know, you'll come up with different results. And if you use the forms that we provide that are easily downloaded, then you can use that to work any of the scenarios you want. And you can be rest, uh, pretty sure that if you follow the steps, you're going to be OK. You're going to be OK. And if there's anything you don't, you just come to Wednesday nights and we'll, uh, we'll go over it. Now, if you're studying on your own, you need to think about scenarios uh, and maybe try to do the load calc on your own house uh, or, or, or make up a, a fictitious commercial building or a multifamily dwelling. Just think of a dwelling unit and everything that's involved in a dwelling unit and then just multiply that by 10 dwelling units and, and work that out and see what it would be for the feeders to those dwelling units and then work out what it would be to the service for that entire building, that type of thing. Uh, and that's what's going to get you prepared for an electrical exam. Now, our program is designed to do this for you, give you the steps so you can go through the steps. Um, so if you're doing it on your own out there, again, you're not really going to get that by flipping through the NEC. So um, hopefully you find a program out there or whatever you're using. But remember, if you've got a book that has nothing but questions, that's really not going to be the well-rounded way to study. And you can get them off Amazon and other places like that. But that, to me, if you were to take that money and invest it in a program like ours, you're going to get way more out of it because you get a book that nobody will give you the answers to. Uh, and, you know, everything has got errors in it. So again, once it's published, it's published. Now with us, if I find anything that I don't agree with that's in our material, I create what's called an error log. And we have very few error logs. So that means that the course material is pretty solid by itself. But if there's something I disagree with, I do an error log. And all you got to do is go look at the error log. And you'll know right up front. Um, so anyway, that's what you need to know. So that's, again, one family dwellings. You need to know multifamily dwellings. You need to know commercial load calculations. Again, like the commercial kitchen aspects of 220.56. You need to understand uh, non-coincident loads. It doesn't just apply to dwellings. It applies to commercial, you know, understanding 220.60. All of these pieces you, you need to have a good grasp of, and we cover that. Or if we don't in the program, we do on Wednesday nights, and you have available access to those videos. Uh, transformers. Um, we have a video series that's available for Transformers. Uh, the course does a pretty good job in Transformers. It covers you know the Transformer protection, primary and secondary. I think it does a pretty adequate job. But again, that's the beautiful thing about the supplement that I do to this is making it available on Wednesday nights. Because you can come and say, Paul, can you explain this a little bit more? Uh, if I've got a panel board on the secondary side, does it have to have overcurrent protection? Absolutely, it does for that panel board. And so, but remember, when we're talking about transformers, we have primary and secondary protection of the transformer, which is different, okay? Which is different than the conductors that might be secondary conductors or a panel board that they terminate into has its own protection rules. So they're all different. And we kind of go through it and you can come in Wednesday night and ask it. But if you're studying for an exam, you need to know that just whipping through the code and looking at 450 is not going to answer all of those questions that you may have. And so who are you going to ask? OK. OK. Well, yes, you could submit them to this podcast, paulabernathy.com, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Uh, but again, that's going to take time because I don't answer everybody's question right away because I have a bunch of them that I have to go through. So it might be not of the essence for you. But if you're in our program, it's just you can't put a value. Stop paying $1,500 and $2,000 for the exam prep courses, folks. Please stop paying five, six, seven hundred dollars for these weekend crash courses. You can get everything in our Fast Tracks program. You can work at your own pace. You can come to Wednesday nights. It's like getting a tutor. I tell people, I'm not usually there for Wednesday nights for one hour. It's usually, ask Schwartzy, one of our uh, frequent uh, folks that come to our Fast Track sessions. Uh, I'm there for hours answering questions. If you've got a question, come to class. They're not required for you to come to class. You can, they're optional. 
But that's why I do it, so that I can be accessible to you to answer these pressing questions you have. I don't want your mind to wander. I want you to get what you need to be successful. And that's what I've dedicated my life to doing. Okay, so understand single phase transformers, understand three phase transformers, understand the difference uh, in the two. And those are what you really need to be well-rounded. Okay, that's really the basics functions of what's necessary to be able to be proficient on any exam. Doesn't matter what state it's in. Doesn't matter where you go. That's what you're going to be testing for. Now, if you're in a state that has things like licensing laws and safety, OSHA and all that, well, you're just going to need to study for that on your own. I don't offer a course, but if it's the business and law, then on our website under our courses link, we do have business and law where we do have access to courses that you can purchase that will cover the business laws within your state if you're worried about that part of the exam. Usually it's straight out of a book or a, a document that they provide you and you just got to read it and understand where things are. But if you do need that extra training, we do have a partnership with that over on our website. Just go under courses. You'll see business law. Click on it and see if your state's listed there. Um, but other than that, our focus is the National Electrical Code. That, that's really what we focus on. Right. So uh, so hopefully that's a, a bit longer than normal podcast for me. So hopefully you listen to the whole thing. Um, but again, get into a structured program. If it's not our program, uh, don't buy a book. Trust me, you can say what you want. It, it don't. I can just tell you right now, if you don't buy us, don't buy a book and don't buy a DVD. Get into a structured course that will walk you through and preferably not one that's just on YouTube because, again, there's nobody to ask questions about. Get into a program that's instructor-led or there's somebody behind it, like our Fast Tracks program, that can answer your questions. We are an academy. We are a corporation here in Texas. We're not a guy that's just doing this part time. Okay. We have, go look, look at our website. Go Google us. Go look at our corporation standing. Go look at our trademarks. We have trademarks on the Fast Tracks program. We have trademarks on CMECP. You're, an individual is not going to get that. We're a corporation that is dedicated to teaching you the National Electrical Code. Okay. I have more than 600 and some podcasts out there, three different podcast platforms. We have tons of videos out there. Um, we try to keep the websites as simple as possible. We don't want to fancy up everything and have all these spinning things. We keep it straightforward and simple. We teach the code. That's what we do. Okay. All right, folks. Well, hopefully you got something out of that. And, uh, again, if you have any questions that you want to submit to me here, and hopefully I answered that question for the individual that submitted that. Um, and I took the opportunity to elaborate even more. Sorry, it's 43 plus minutes in, but if you want to get more information on our Fast Tracks programs, please go to electricalcodeacademy.net.org or .com. Uh, we have a Black Friday special till November 30th. If you're listening to this after that, sorry, the special's off. Don't ask for it because it's gone. If you want the Fast Tracks Plus, go check it out. Uh, if you want to submit your questions to Let's Ask Paul, just go to paulabernathy.com, submit it, and it'll go into the queue. And when I get to it, I will answer it either in a podcast or you'll get an email with my answer. Till next time, folks, stay safe. God bless.